Oh, no, thanks for the introduction. And it's actually a great pleasure to start yet another sunny day in Phoenix <laughs> uh, with this talk. And today I will be speaking about uh, ILPs and IPs applied in a third division uh, setting. And this work has been done at TU Berlin with Robert Dushan and Rolf. And my name is Andre, as it was said. And since it's quite early now, let's start with a quick recap what an allocation is. So we've got some agents. We've got some items. As you see here, the type of items maybe is not so, uh, the number of types is not so large because there are three of them that there might come in many, uh, in many pieces, like let's say, or maybe not pieces, but in many numbers. So one item might have many uh, high, multi high multiplicity of, of occurrences. And this is why, where, why it, this part of, of high multiplicity comes from. So now what we, are, uh, what we need to know as well is some kind of utility that agents give to the items. So here we can see this um, yellow guy gives utility one to the green item, whereas this green guy gives utility three. Uh, just for being formally correct, this is what, what we are given. And just uh, look here that the multiplicities of items are given in binary. It's also why it's high multiplicity. Um, here I use this key that each agent values a particular item to one if this is not of the same color and to three if this is the other case. Um, okay, now what is an allocation? It's quite simple. We are just taking goods and allocating them to agents such that uh, those allocated goods or, or sets of items that are allocated to agents, we call them bundles, are not, um, uh, are not interleaving, so are, are disjoint basically. Um, and here we can see one allocation, and then we can compute the utility of an agent. This agent, for example, has a utility of three because in his bundle there are uh, three items of different colors, so three, one plus one plus one gives three. But you can also kind of make this uh, allocation better by exchanging it. And now, for example, the yellow agent gets utility six, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, a bit of notation. It's not super important, but what is important actually is this P of A, this is just a bundle of agent A. And the last row is also important where you have the utility of agent A that it gives to, uh, to bundle that is given here, particularly to the same agent, so P of A. Um, this could be, for example, P of B, then it would be the, um, the utility that agent A gives to the bundle of agent B. And as I previously, maybe I didn't mention it explicitly, uh, we compute the utilities as, as an additive uh, like they are additive, so we are just, we are just computing the sum of uh, particular items in the bundle. <clears throat> okay, so we can somehow assess the allocation. They can be good or bad. How do we do it? Well, kind of intuitive description is what if we just put everything to one agent, the kind of the other ones are unhappy. So we cannot consider this a good allocation because maybe we could do something better. Um, but if we just think that they are unhappy and this one is happy, there is a simple solution. So let's do an empty allocation, then no one is happy, and this actually helps. And so this is covered, as you probably know, uh, by concepts of efficiency and concepts of um, fairness. So the first one, let's say, is fairness. Uh, an allocation might be NV3. This basically means that there is no agent who would like to swap his or her items with any other agent. Formally, more or less, it looks like that. But empty allocation meets this criteria because if everyone has nothing, then they don't want to swap. <laughs> um, the other uh, concept we need to probably add there, so to avoid those empty allocations, is some concept of efficiency. Here we are using Pareto efficiency or Pareto optimality. Um, and an allocation is Pareto optimal if it's not Pareto dominated, and it's Pareto dominated when there exists uh, another allocation that is kind of better than the one we have already. What it means is it's better well, basically that every agent is not less happy than it was before, and at least one agent is even happier. Um, and when we combine these two, this is actually what we might want to achieve, so such that we cannot find a better allocation, but still this allocation is NV3. But unfortunately, combining those uh, concepts leads to an to, to extremely hard problem. And why this is important that we have at least some solution to this problem, if it's possible, because it might not be possible to get uh, uh, to find an NV-free allocation, but if we have uh, such an allocation, that it's actually nice to, to, to be able to find it. Why? Because we can apply it. Uh, and actually, this, is, uh, this picture is meant to show something like food bank. So this is probably a food bank for pets. 
But what it nicely shows is that there are maybe not so many different kinds of items, but there are many of them in one kind. Uh, a similar thing that uh, the similar thing appears, for example, for employee benefits. So it's actually better to, to, to recognize your employees without monetary payment, but with some non-monetary benefits. And there, you cannot maybe come up with many of them, like one free day, maybe one free meal or something like that. But you have a lot of employees, for example, like you have a corporation. Uh, and it means that uh, many of those, uh, not so many kinds of benefits can come in many multiplicities or in big multiplicities, actually. And the last allocation you can think of is just inheritance. So let's not think about physical things, but about stock markets, uh, shares. And there you might also have uh, a huge number of different, but not so many maybe, uh, stock shares. So formally, ah, sorry. Uh, yeah, so what we are actually doing is we are trying to compute them and uh, we are using so-called parameterized complexity. So for those of you who are not familiar, this is a short primer uh, or basically just the schedule thing that we are using. So we are focusing on fixed parameter tractability that intuitively gives this exponential blow up that is inherently connected to NP hardness, uh, at least we believe so, um, to, to, to some particular feature of a problem. So let's have a feature X, let's say, of some problem P, and then you can consider some instance I of size, actually it should be like the size of I, not I, <laughs> and with some feature with value X. So for example, this feature can be the number of agents in our setting. So now if you are able to find such an algorithm uh, that the running time uh, is upper bounded by some uh, po by, by polynomial in the size of the input, but whatever function, so there uh, the exponential blow up can be hidden. Uh, so whatever function but of this parameter x, then, x, then we say that it's, uh, the problem is FPT. So if you can actually prove that it works for every, uh, for every instance of the problem that you get this kind of uh, an FPT time uh, algorithm. So you are able to somehow um, blow up the instance, but if you are not blowing up this particular feature or this particular parameter, that you, are, you can still think of it as you are able to solve it quickly. <laughs> Whatever it means, actually our results are not uh, practically re relevant at this time. Or they are just of purely theoretical meaning. Um, Okay, so what, would, what, it's, what is known about this NV3 Pareto efficient allocation problem? Here we have quite a formal definition, but it basically says that we are looking for an NV3 allocation that is also Pareto efficient, so not Pareto dominated. So there are at least two papers, there are many of them, but two I would like to mention the results from. Uh, but these papers are actually dealing with uh, items encoded when, when the multiplicities are encoded in unary. So in general, this problem is sigma 2p complete. You can hope for doing better having some constrained instances, but unfortunately you cannot. Um, even if the utilities are identical for all agents, or even if you have preferences only 0, 1, it doesn't help so much. It's still NP hard. I mean, it helps a bit, right? But not super much. Uh, the same holds uh, if you only constrain your instances to two agents. And in the second, I guess, of this paper, the question uh, was raised. What happens if we have few agents and few values? So in this parameter side complexity sense, what happens is our features uh, are uh, the number of agents and the number of different values of utility functions. So unfortunately, we weren't able to solve exactly this problem. We solved a similar problem. So we solved this EF allocation, but not with respect to the uh, different number, uh, different uh, values in the utility functions, but with respect to the maximum utility value. And this is slightly, uh, a, a slightly weaker thing. Um, so the parameters here for our results uh, is the number of agents and the maximum utility. But on the other hand, we allowed for, multiple, uh, for, for high multiplicities, so the multiplicities that are encoded in binary. So I want to give the full proof definitely. I will just give some insights on the proof because they will be important to, to then show a kind of a framework that we came up with that at least we believe it, that it might be easy to use. Um, so proof generally goes in two steps. The first step is observing um, that we can kind of bound the, the, the size of different allocations that are Pareto dominating our uh, initial allocation. 
So you can think about uh, an allocation that is that, uh, the, another allocation that is going to Pareto dominate our candidate allocation, let's say, uh, as somehow an effect of exchanging goods, like a series of exchanging goods. And then using um, IP techniques, namely n-fold IPs, uh, you can show that these changes I mean, cannot be too big, so they are bounded by parameters. I mean, they can be bigger, but what is enough is to consider some ball that is bounded by, by a ball in the terms of, uh, of, different, um, of different exchanges that is, of not so, uh, that is not so big, so the size is bounded by the parameters. Then using this knowledge, basically, you are going to design some ILP. So the first might not that need to be an ILP. It might be an IP with, uh, with function that is not linear, the optimization function. <clears throat> Uh, and then you are constructing some ILP that looks for some NV3 allocation and just ensures that there exists no other allocation in this ball that we previously bounded that is Pareto dominating the, uh, the NV3 allocation. So what you can show here is that this ILP that comes or pops out here uh, is bounded. So the dimension, the number of uh, different Mm, variables is bounded by the parameters, and then you are using a, a result of Lenstra to show uh, FPT solvability of such instances of ILP. Uh, and this is just about this problem about NV3 and Pareto optimal allocations, but apparently we observe that you can actually kind of leave this proof to give some, let's say, framework or a, a meta theorem. So we've got two uh, steps. The first step actually was connected and related to efficiency concepts. The second one was related to a fairness concept. So we can extract them and we can kind of come up with such a fancy, fancy meta theorem. I will not focus on the formal thing here. I will just show this brief description. If you would like to, you can read this um, while I'm just saying the informal part. So basically in this framework, you just take your favorite efficiency concept uh, and you kind of model it as an IP with bounded three depth. Uh, that means basically that the, the constraints are not so much connected to each other. Then you take uh, your favorite uh, fairness concept and you model it uh, as an ILP that is bounded in the dimension by the parameters that we are focusing on. And then you can just plug in those IPs and ILPs that you came, came up with to the meta theorem and you get a parameterized, um, and you get a parameterized uh, algorithm that works in this time. <clears throat> so in our paper, uh, we, actually, uh, we actually gave some more, um, some more concepts. We gave some examples how to do it. So, Maybe going to the slightly uh, and slowly to the conclusions, what, is the, what are the features of the framework? So basically it gives us uh, this kind of um, FPT algorithms. It's meant that it's kind of for free in terms that you don't need to come up with all the machinery, you just need to find IPs or, or ILPs. Um, what it does, what is, not what is not always assumed is that it gives us, it allows us negative utilities, although with if you combine negative utilities and positive utilities, for example, the definition of NV freeness might be a bit tricky, so it should be worked out then. Uh, so as I said, it captures many more concepts, not only NV freeness, but NV freeness up to one good, NV freeness up to any good. And there are concepts of those uh, graph NV freeness. So basically there is a graph that is describing who can NV whom, uh, and not, for example, the other way around. Uh, and there is also graph Pareto efficiency. And all of them actually we describe in our paper and show how to, how to come up with ILPs. Sometimes these ILPs or IPs are also available in the literature because they were sought already um, um, by someone. You can also combine fairness concepts. So imagine that you have two graphs and one graph is describing where there must be NV freeness up to any good and where there must be strict NV freeness. So you can take two different graphs, combine those concepts and write a particular a particular uh, ILP and then plug it into um, the framework. Okay, uh, so as I mentioned, it's meant to be easy to use. It, it's, it's a bit fishy to say maybe easy, but you just take the concepts and model them as IPs and ILPs. Uh, 
And as I said, many of those models already exist in the literature. Okay, so just to conclude uh, and to give this small remark, so there was this concept of bounded uh, tree depth and so on, dual tree depth actually. Uh, we, you can avoid it uh, and you can just give ILPs with bounded dimensions for two concepts. Ooh, ah, sorry. Uh, but then uh, it comes with a price of, of, of uh, kind of leaving out the binary encoded, uh, the binary encoded uh, multiplicities. They have to be again and back, unarily encoded. Um, but this can be considered as a first step. Okay, so to conclude, uh, what we would like to plan to do is to implement it. It's, as I said, it's purely theoretical now, but maybe there is some possibility that actually this ball that I described is not so high in many particular cases. Uh, and there are also open problems. So still the parametrization uh, with respect to the number of different utility functions is open. No one knows uh, among us how to solve it. Uh, and also for particular concrete uh, efficiency fairness, you might have better bounds than the general bound that we gave for, for, for this ball D that works basically for general case if you can find an IFP model. And that's all, and thanks. So actually, yeah, this is the, the point of this open uh, of this open problem. We considered uh, kind of a special agent technically that is like a, a, a trash agent that can take everything and he, it is not considered. You can remove this trash agent and you get our results and then you have complete allocation. But I'm not super sure whether you can even make it better. And now it's two to the end, blah, 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 and there is also one more exponent uh, appearing there. But I'm not, I'm not super sure. It would be really nice if someone can do it. Maybe we would try. Oh, it's a hard question, but I do not think so that it gets easier. Um, because you have to still spread the copies, and if you actually have one particular nasty item and you copy this nasty item, that you might make things worse. But it, it's just an intuition. I do not have like ready to go answer. <laughs> So, yes, yes, exactly. So, n-fold IPs are just kind of a specific case of those dual bounded three bit uh, IPs. And we used them for Pareto efficiency because it, it gave just better bounds than the general bounded uh, dual three depth approach. Mm -hmm. We have time for one more question, as Sumina is heading up. I was actually wondering you said other notions of Pareto efficiency. Uh, so you mentioned some graph parity efficiency. Yeah. So all are variants of parity efficiency, or something even? No, no. Th those are variants of parity efficiency that can be found in the literature somewhere. Okay. So uh, uh, basically, our methodology was to find different concepts and try to uh, show how you can encode them in IPs. And those, this graph parity efficiency was there. But I mean, you can also consider completeness as a simple efficiency concept, right? So the, you can just get rid of this parity efficiency and use completeness for example. Okay. Sounds good. Let's thank Andre again. Thanks. Thanks.